Hi, uh, my name is Jaylin. I'm a Palm instructor, and today we'll go through a sample case to demonstrate some of the principles of clinical reasoning. Um, this is actually a patient I saw last week in the emergency department. Uh, I'll kind of walk you through what stands out in the HPI in the physical exam, and then we'll kind of develop um, a problem representation and a tiered differential. Okay. So this is a night shift that I saw this patient. It was a 25-year-old male, a history of self-described heartburn, now here with four hours of a central abdominal pain. That's very severe. So off the bat, I'm thinking this is very acute. Four hours, right? They can give me the exact time. Um, started tonight around six o'clock after dinner. Um, whenever, whenever I'm thinking about folks with abdominal pain, I always like to think about, um, obviously the GI tract and what's going in and out of it, right? Uh, it's 10 out of 10 sharp in the center of the abdomen, and it doesn't really radiate anywhere else associated with three episodes of non-bloody emesis, as well as one episode of diarrhea. All right. So now he's throwing up, uh, pooping, uh, no known aggravating or alleviating symptoms and no fevers or chills. Uh, the patient denied any odd ingestions. Uh, their last meal was actually uh, pizza rolls and cheese puffs, which I guess sound fairly benign. Uh, his family had similar foods, and they are all asymptomatic. Uh, he denies any uh, drugs or any medications that has taken recently, uh, denies any alcohol ingestion, uh, no recent travel, uh, known, no known sick contacts. Now, this patient does have a history of self-described heartburn after meals, uh, feels a generally a mild one out of 10 throat, kind of a chest discomfort um, that's actually alleviated with over-the-counter antacids. And he feels that this episode is different um, than his heartburn episodes, okay? So now just off of this, I wanna kind of think about what are the, the salient points here? So he's young, he's generally healthy. He doesn't have like 20 chronic diseases. Um, has this mild baseline recurrent symptoms, but now has a very new severe abdominal pain that's, he describes, very different than this. Um, and nothing else really in the history that um, you can get as an inciting factor, right? Um, he's eating fairly benign foods and no one's really sick around him, okay? So now we'll kind of talk a little bit about my approach to abdominal pain. And I like to think about the organs that are involved and uh, what would be causing these symptoms, right? So we'll start over here and we'll do kind of a crude, crude drawing of an abdomen. Here's a diaphragm there. Um, so organs that I always think about. Uh, first, we have our esophagus and our stomach here. All right. Um, is anything irritating in the stomach? Obviously, if someone has a history of heartburn, I'm thinking, is this a worsening heartburn? Is this like a uh, gastritis, maybe like a gastric ulcer picture where his acid is just um, uncontrolled and just really irritating his stomach? Uh, in anybody, I always think about on the right side, we have our liver and our gallbladder. Right? Is it someone with biliary disease? Uh, do they have stones? Do they have a new uh, hepatitis that's irritating their liver? Uh, on our left, we have our spleen. Um, is it someone who's uh, chronic sickle cell disease and now they're kind of infarcting their spleen? In the back here, we have our pancreas, right? Is this someone who's a chronic drinker, uh, someone with really high triglycerides, and now their pancreas is inflamed? Um, and then finally, we have our kind of our bowel, right? Um, is this someone whose bowel is obstructed, and now they're throwing up? Someone whose bowel is irritated, and now they're having diarrhea, right? Um, someone who has like diverticulitis, and the walls is um, inflamed. And maybe in someone who's young, is this kind of a new uh, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's ulcerative colitis, okay? So those, those are the main kind of GI organs I'm thinking about. Uh, I'll also add on here some of the, I'll call it extra GI um, organs that can sometimes present as abdominal pain. Uh, for a lot of folks with uh, cardiac history, I'm always thinking, 
is is a heart attack. It's this cardiac pain that they perceive as um, their abdomen. Uh, I think about the lungs, especially folks with like uh, bad lower pneumonias, that's irritating the diaphragm. They feel it as abdominal pain, right? Um, I always think about the ribs and the skin, right? Is it someone who just got in a fight and now they have rib fractures? Um, or is it maybe someone who's having some shingles and now their, their abdominal skin is what's causing their uh, symptoms? Um, in the back, we have our kidneys, right? Is this someone who's having uh, like a kidney stone or a kidney infection that they perceive as uh, abdominal pain? Uh, and then lower down below, I always think about the reproductive organs, right? Is this like an ovarian torsion? Is this kind of a testicular torsion? Um, or is this someone um, with uterine uh, disease, urine, uterine irritation that they're perceiving as abdominal pain? And then finally, we have our bladder here. Is this a UTI that they feel um, is irritating them, All right? So those are the those are the main organs I'm thinking about. And then uh, as far as GI kind of factors, I always think about um, I think about what's going into the system, right? What's going into the system? So is there any weird foods, right? Um, is there any weird drugs? Did this person just take thirty ibuprofen and now it's like burning their stomach lining? Um, and then other along with that, is there any recent sick contacts versus travel, right? Did they go into an endemic region where there is a certain virus going on? Um, do they have 10 roommates all with COVID and now they have COVID like uh, gastroenteritis, right? So uh, now kind of going back into our patient, I'm just gonna highlight some things I'm thinking about so far. Uh, so far, none of the, he doesn't really have any weird foods, no weird drugs. Um, he has a history of heartburn that we know of. So we know his esophagus at baseline, he gets irritated. So now I'm thinking, is this more of a, of a stomach issue, right? That's now getting worse. Um, I always think if it's very acute in someone who's obese, is this his uh, gallbladder acting up, right? Uh, not really that big of a drinker, no real risk factors for me to think about as pancreas. Um, this is a young guy. So I'm thinking, is this the uh, bowel that's irritated, right? And oh, just to add on to the bowel, we also have over here towards the right lower, we have our appendix, right? And a young guy, uh, who's having now sudden pain, is his appendix about to burst, right? Um, he's not really giving me any, like, um, uh, oh, well, I, uh, appendix about to burst, right. So now let's go back to, so now let's go a little further um, and see what else we can get from this history. Uh, again, his past medical is just that heartburn. Uh, never had any surgical history. Uh, no known family history. His parents and his siblings are all healthy. Uh, he just takes the PRN Tums as needed. Uh, no other meds, uh, no other drugs, um, no allergies. And again, with any GI, I always like to get a sense, is there anything that this person can't tolerate, right? So he can drink milk without issues, take gluten without issues. Um, nothing really notable in the social history. He's employed, lives in New York City with his family. Uh, no other weird contacts, uh, no drugs or alcohol that he uses. Um, and his review systems is all negative. Um, some other things I asked him about, uh, did he have any uh, dysuria, any pain with peeing, uh, any coughs, uh, fevers, stuff like that, uh, all of which are negative for him. So now we'll go kind of into our physical exam. Uh, so we'll start with his vital signs. He's a little tachycardic at 110 and a tad hypertensive at um, 150 over 95. Uh, he's satting okay, a little tachypnic at 18 and afib, afib bra, right? So these are the things that stand out to me. 
in a in a 25 year old i'm thinking is this all kind of a pain response right is he just uncomfortable and this is what's like riling him up a little bit um and anyone who's tagged heartache and they had some diarrhea and emesis i'm thinking is the volume down right um Thankfully, this is a very acute process, right? He's otherwise, before this, was eating fine. Um, but did he lose so much volume in, in throwing up and, and that diarrhea that now he's his body's trying to compensate by being uh, a little tachycardic, right? So things I'm thinking about. And then thankfully, he he subjectively was did not have a fever, and he objectively is a fibro here. So less concern about kind of a new infectious process especially in someone who's otherwise healthy and should be able to mount a fever response, okay? So uh, let's go through our exam. He is a very obese male, um, appears to stay to age. Uh, generally kind of uncomfortable. He's kind of like, mm, kind of grabbing at his stomach, uh, but he's able, if you talk to him, able to kind of uh, distract himself and engage in your physical. Uh, his mucous membranes are generally fairly moist. Uh, his lungs are completely clear, although mm, tad diminished on the bottom, uh, which just may be due to his body habitus. Uh, his cardiac exam is really unremarkable. He has good pulses, um, good uh, ba -ba -ba. no real edema. Now, here's kind of the, the highlight of our exam, his abdomen exam. So he has an obese abdomen. Uh, no surgical scars, which someone told us you didn't have any surgeries, uh, makes sense. Uh, no overlying skin changes. Again, if this guy just got in a fight and he had some broken ribs, I might expect some bruising. Uh, he has intact bowel sounds, right? So I'm less concerned that his whole bowel is obstructed. Uh, now his tenderness with deep palpation is mostly in the right upper quadrant, has a little bit in the epigastrum. Uh, none in the lower quadrants. Uh, now, just to kind of go back to our our the history provided, he he subjectively kind of described everything in kind of the center, but again on our exam, we're getting more of this right upper right upper uh, quadrant tenderness, and again none in the bottom, right? Um, and and this is the thing you'll you'll realize a lot about abdominal pain is the location where the patient describes uh, their pain is not always the area where you get the most tenderness on your exam. Um, and so it's, it's important to kind of point those out and think about um, that when you're really uh, doing your assessment. Uh, he's not guarding. He doesn't have any rebound tenderness. Uh, no uh, tenderness over McBurney's point. And again, McBurney's point is kind of the lower uh, right lower quadrant between the umbilicus and the uh, ischial spine, which kind of makes us think about appendicitis. He does not have tenderness there. And uh, interesting enough, he has a negative Murphy sign. So Murphy sign is classically a uh, physical exam to assess for uh, gallbladder disease, where you kind of push down on their right upper and you ask them to breathe in. Uh, if they're able to breathe in completely, uh, you're less concerned about gallbladder disease uh, if they cannot take a full breath. So they, oh, I can't take it all the way in. Um, that makes you more concerned about uh, gallbladder disease. And then finally, uh, no costal vertebral uh, angle tenderness. So when you kind of pound on his back over his kidneys, it's not really tender for him. Okay? So now, now we've gotten our, our history and our physical. Let's, let's go back to um, our, our sample uh, anatomy here. So we'll just think about some things. Uh, the foods, the foods that you took, took pizza rolls, took um, some cheese puffs, uh, and otherwise he does okay with dairy. So now I'm thinking these are fairly fatty foods, right? So it kind of fits in the picture of if this is kind of gallbladder disease, maybe he just ate something really fatty. After the meal, his body is trying to make a lot of bile, push it all out. There's a stone in the way that's getting really irritated and what's causing him pain. Pizza also, I guess you could say, is kind of acidic. Maybe he has kind of chronic heartburn. Now that that acid's kind of irritating his stomach a little bit more, and so he has more of a gastritis, uh, worsening pain there. So we talked about the foods. Um, doesn't drink, doesn't take any drugs. Um, no one's sick around him. He's not traveled anywhere else. Um, now kind of going here, 
uh, he he doesn't really have any uh, significant cardiac history, so I'm I'm less concerned that he's having like a heart attack now. I guess besides the fact that he's obese, uh, but otherwise young. His lungs are perfectly clear, so I'm less concerned about uh, a new pneumonia here, especially if he's not having a cough and not having a fever. So we'll kind of uh, bring those to the background. Uh, he is 25, has no known like hematological diseases. I don't think he's infarcting his spleen right now. Um, again, uh, no real history of uh, cracked ribs. His skin looks okay. I don't think it's shingles. Um, he didn't have any uh, dysuria uh, and no costovertebral angle tenderness, so I don't think this is kind of a new kidney stone or pyelonephritis. Um, again, he denies any testicular pain, uh, no burning with peeing. Um, he really has no tenderness when I push over his appendix, and so I, I really don't think this is a kind of a new appendicitis. Uh, I guess maybe this could be kind of a pancreatitis if he really is that obese, hasn't had any um, blood tests. Uh, maybe he does have a super high triglyceride and that's what's irritating him. And then uh, as far as kind of a new onset um, bowel, uh, he's not obstructed uh, both by history and physical. He has bowel sounds and he's um, had diarrhea. Uh, maybe this is kind of a um, little irritative colitis like uh, Food's kind of bothering him, and he's kind of uh, having diarrhea. But one episode is not crazy. Um, but as far as, let's say, a new Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, I'd expect a little more tenderness um, down below. And for me, he was only tender um, up top in the right upper quadrant, right? So now that's kind of following lower on my differential. So, so to, to put this together, we'll start out with our, let's see, we'll do our problem representation, okay? This is a 25-year-old male, um, otherwise healthy, and I'll say he has recurrent ep episodic uh, abdominal pain, right? Which is mild. Now, with a new severe central abdominal pain with emesis and diarrhea and exam with I will say right upper quadrant isolated tenderness right so just to kind of go through that my problemization is not a copy and paste of the HPI, right? Instead, it kind of guides the, the listener into what I'm thinking about for my differential, right? I'm pointing out the salient points that, that um, matter in my history, and I'm pointing out the physical exam findings that really stand out to me and is going to lead me down um, into my differential. So first, as I was talking about before, Thing I'm thinking about is going to be our, I'll call it Coley disease, right? Um, and this is going to be for me like a Coley lithiasis where he has um, gallstones and that's kind of giving him some biliary colic. One of the gallstones probably got stuck um, and now he's having a lot of pain trying to pass all that bile through. And, and that ex expands up. So I'll have Coley lithiasis to Coley cystitis. Right, so cystitis is an acute inflammation uh, infection of that gallbladder. Right, so again, this is a very uh, new acute issue. Maybe it's just a stone that's getting stuck now, and that's causing him some all that pain. And maybe in an hour by now, that gallbladder is going to get really inflamed, and if nothing moves out, it might get infected. Right, right now he's not uh, completely febrile, so I don't think it's a systemic infection. Um, but that's kind of the spectrum I'm thinking about. Okay. Two, if someone has kind of that known heartburn um, and now he ate something acidic, maybe this is kind of, I'll call it kind of a GERD to gastritis 
I can't spell, uh, gastritis picture. Um, so maybe his stomach is always kind of a little irritated. That lining is kind of thin because he's um, producing all this acid, um, has that heartburn, and now maybe he just ate something and now that heartburn is getting a lot worse. That stomach's getting irritated. Um, and I'll also add on here kind of a gastric ulcer um, in that spectrum, right? Maybe he has a kind of an ulcer that was kind of dwindling in the background and now that just got really irritated, okay? Um, and then three, in someone who's now throwing up and has really that middle right upper quadrant pain, I'm also thinking about maybe this is a pancreatitis, right? Uh, especially in someone who's obese, maybe his triglycerides are very, very high and today's the day where all that fatty tissue um, in his blood is just irritating his pancreas, causing all that pain, that tenderness, and he's kind of vomiting a lot, okay? So that's going to be my tiered differential. And then finally, we'll go into our plan. Now, the plan is is, I would argue, one of the harder parts if you really have not been working on the wards um, because the plan is so specific to the setting you're in, right? If you're outpatient in an office, your plan looks very different than if you're in an ICU where you have a lot more tools available, right? So I saw him in the emergency department, so I'm going to make a plan based on the tools that I have in the emergency department, okay? So first, while we want to investigate our differential, um, folks in the emergency department generally are uncomfortable and we should treat what makes them uncomfortable, right? So this guy is definitely in pain. So I want to give him some medicines for his pain, so pain treatment. He's still kind of nauseous, still doesn't want to take anything down. I really don't want him to throw up while he's here. So I'll give him some anti-emetics, right? Um, he probably lost a little bit of volume. I don't know how much of his vital signs is pain, how much of it's volume, uh, volume down. Um, so I certainly, if I'm going to get, if I want to stick him for um, blood, I could give him some IV fluids. So I'll call it IV hydration. And because this is a guy who has some abnormal vital signs, I, I do need to reassess him frequently, right? So I'm going to check on him maybe in 30 minutes, maybe in an hour, just to make sure his blood pressure is hopefully improving. Um, hopefully his heart rate's coming down um, and his breathing rate's also coming down, right? Because if it's going in the opposite direction, that makes me a lot more concerned. And maybe I have to change up my differential for some more toxic things, okay? So while I'm doing that, I'm also going to start to investigate uh, all my differentials. So if I'm thinking he has cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, um, probably the best test and the least invasive test for a young person is going to be a right upper quadrant ultrasound, uh, which is no radiation. I can probably get it done in the department or I can uh, do it myself just to check to see if we um, look under his gallbladder. Do we see tons of stones in there? Is that wall big and inflamed? Is there maybe a stone stuck at the end of it? And that's what's causing um, his problems. While I'm doing that, I'll probably get some blood work as well. So I'll call it blood work. Um, I can check basically his liver function test, make sure that uh, his, li his liver is not inflamed from all this backup. I'll probably check some bilirubin. Um, again, if he's blocking up, his bilirubin is going to go high in his blood. And then I'll try to check a alk phosphatase, um, which has some sensitivity for that uh, biliary duct. Uh, next, I'm going to go and uh, if he has GERD and gastritis, unfortunately, this is something that is diagnosed through a uh, endoscopy and we don't really have endoscopy here. Um, but if this is something I'm thinking about, I should treat it. So I'd probably give him a anti-acid, probably through the IV if it's not taking anything by mouth, um, and just see if that helps him out. And I guess not today, but as an outpatient, I probably consider if this guy is having really worsening um, kind of gastritis pain, if this is a candidate for endoscopy, to really check out if he has any ulcers there, 
right? And then finally, if I'm thinking about pancreatitis, I will start probably with some uh, blood work. Um, again, if he has a stone that's causing his pancreatitis, I should be able to see it here. Um, but with the blood work, I'll probably check a lipase to see if his pancreatic enzymes are elevated. And probably if I'm thinking this is might be due to his triglycerides, I'll probably also check a triglyceride panel just to get a better sense of what's going on here. Okay? And so this is my problem representation. Again, 25-year-old male, recurrent kind of mild belly pain, now with severe abdominal pain, mostly in the right upper quadrant. I'm thinking is this uh, biliary disease like a cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, is this kind of GERD, or is this maybe a new pancreatitis? Less concerned about the rest of the bowel, the appendix, the kidneys, based on my exam. Um, I'm going to start out by getting that ultrasound, getting those blood work, treating his pain, uh, treating his nausea, giving him hydration, and then assessing. If I have a great answer, we'll treat it that way. Um, and if not, maybe I have to go back in my differential and think of some other causes for this. Okay? So again, this is my personal um, problem presentation and my tier differential. Um, if you gave this to another clinician, uh, they might read that same physical, read that same history, and think of some other things, or, or reorder um, that differential uh, based on what they think. And again, this is kind of all based on, unfortunately, clinical experience. Um, but it's a good practice for you to kind of, as you're reading cases and meeting patients, to think in your head, what goes along with what problems I know? Um, what are things that um, stand out in my history? What stands out in my physical? And then from there, kind of building a tier differential and then building a starting plan, okay? Um, hopefully you enjoy this. And if you did, we can try to make uh, some more of these videos to cover some more topics. All right, thank you.